Cellular chromatography, or TLC, is an easy way to identify compounds and mixtures, as well as monitoring the progress of reactions or chromatography. It is a quick technique to achieve clear, albite qualitative results, thus allowing you to make decisions on the status of reactions. Heat the middle of a pipette over a blue Bunsen flame. Hold the ends carefully as they will get hot. Using latex gloves is not ideal as they usually reduce your grip on the pipette. When the middle part is hot enough, it will become pliable. Pull the ends apart quickly and smoothly. This will draw the middle into a thin string-like tube. Don't pull too much as the middle will split. Stretching your hands apart about one meter should be enough to achieve spotters of acceptable thickness. Allow the glass to cool and split the thin sections into spotters of manageable length for easy use. Cut the TLC plate down to an appropriate size. Around 6 cm by 2.5 cm should be sufficient. Draw a line 1.5 cm from the bottom and start another line around 0.5 to 1 cm from the top using a blunt pencil. Mark a spot on the bottom start line and label it accordingly. Fill your solvent jar with the appropriate eluent mixture. Usually a mixture of hexane and ethyl acetate is used, generally in ratios of 6 to 4, 7 is to 3, 8 is to 2, or 9 is to 1. As they have similar boiling points and their individual rates of evaporation are similar, meaning the ratios of individual components won't vary much with time. Use a spotter, cut down to a minimal size, and immerse it slightly into your desired solution. Next, gently touch the spotter to the surface of the marked spot on the TLC plate to allow the solution to flow out and be absorbed by the silica surface. Ensuring that the spot remains of a minimal diameter, touch the spotter two or three times more to ensure the solution is adequately concentrated. The more dilute your solution is, the more spots are required for adequate clarity. Allow the spots to dry using a heat gun if necessary. Immerse the TLC plate into the solvent jar ensuring that the height of the solvent is not higher than the start line on the TLC plate and allow to stand until the solvent front reaches the finish line at the top. Remove the TLC plate and allow to dry using a heat gun if necessary. For unsaturated compounds, this is a quick and easy technique. Simply put your TLC plate under a UV lamp and observe where any spots are situated. The silica on the TLC plate is impregnated with a fluorescence dye for contrast. Using lamps with variable wavelengths will give you access to identification of a wider variety of unsaturated compounds. For oxidizable compounds, simply dip into a solution of potassium permanganate mixed with sodium carbonate and dilute sodium hydroxide and allow to stand briefly. Dry the purple stained plate of the tissue and heat gently for a brief amount of time until clear yellow spots start to emerge. For general use, simply immerse your dry TLC plate into a beaker containing iodine beads. Allow to stand and gradually observe the development of brown spots. These gradually disappear, allowing the plate to develop further using other stains. TLC is a useful way to qualitatively determine the purity of substances as well as identify compounds and mixtures. This can be easily done in the following way. 
spot diluted sample of your mixture onto a TLC plate which is slightly wider than normal. Spot samples of the suspected pure components just next to the mixture spot. Run your TLC in a solvent of your choice and develop the result once the solvent front reaches the top line. Compare the spots obtained and identify the components in the mixture. TLC is often used to qualitatively follow the progress of a reaction. By monitoring the relative proportions of the starting reagent and the formation of product spots, it is possible to track the progress of a reaction and determine when it should be stopped. Take samples of your pure reagent mixtures and dilute with ether or dichloromethane and keep them in small labeled resealable vials. Take a sample of your reaction mixture as soon as you start it by means of a capillary tube. It is ideal to use slightly wider tubes for this purpose. Dilute the sample with a small amount of ether or dichloromethane in a small test tube. Spot this next to your starting materials on the same TLC. Label each spot clearly. Develop the TLC after the run and identify the starting materials. Along the progress of the reaction, take samples from the reaction mixture at set intervals, for example every hour, and develop the TLC against the starting materials and or the previous sample. This will allow you to compare and examine any progress that has been made. If you are heating your reaction, Remove the flask from the heating source briefly while taking the samples to avoid unnecessary evaporation of reagents, products or solvent. While you are doing this, keep your eye out for any new spots or any starting materials which have become depleted. Generally, it is best to stop your reaction once your limiting reagent, the one present in the least amount, is depleted or you begin to notice other spots showing up which might indicate other side reactions going on. Always use safety specs when preparing spotters due to the exposure of glass to a flame. Also, Take great care not to burn your fingers, hands, limbs, etc. in the process. It is important to use a pencil when labeling the TLC plates. Ink will simply dissolve in your eluent. Do not touch, scratch or damage the silica surface as it will negatively affect the outcome of your TLC result. Ensure that your start line is above the solvent level in the jar so as to prevent the solution of your spot downwards into the eluent mixture. Try to keep constant start and finish lines for easy comparison of your TLC plates after development. Always ensure your TLC plates are dry before and after development. Do not spot too much of your solution as otherwise the development will be unsatisfactory. If necessary, dilute your solution before spotting.